So hello everyone. So it's not party yet, huh? we still have some work. Uh, I know lunchtime is very close as well. So I'm Eric Schaller, so I'm the chairman of an Eolia company and we are manufacturing uh, instrumentation for packaging industry for 70% of the business. And uh, maybe we focus on uh, hermeticity, a uh, modified atmosphere application, or uh, traditional air fever for biscuit area. This is uh, for hermeticity, this is half of our business in the packaging industry for dried food and biscuit, cereal, and so on. We are a small team of eight people and we export to 60 countries. Um, the strategy of Aneolia was to develop a reference instrument for uh, hermeticity control. And um, one of the questions is uh, why we should do hermeticity control in the process. Uh, I will not talk about uh, products, biscuits, and flavors, and things like that. This is uh, mainly your job. And my job is to give you a tool of evaluation. Uh, and you will probably see as a conclusion how to drive the methodology for hermeticity control to help you in having improvement and measurable uh, um, means, basically, um, and achieve, hopefully, a certain goal. In first place, I would like to have a, a little survey in the, in the audience. Um, who ever used any uh, instrumentation giving data for hermeticity? Can you just uh, hold your hand to, so I can have a view of the population I talk to? Ah, Dennis, you, 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 you. <laughs> Okay, and uh, who is dealing with modified atmosphere? Okay, that's clear. Thank you for the answer. So, basically, uh, what is the world of today? Uh, the world of today is, uh, as always, to give uh, maximum uh, satisfaction to the consumer because, uh, as we heard, um, for a factory, um, the factory try to get satisfied consumer to have consumer paying the factory, and then the boss try to pay the employees. But initially, we, should, we need to have customers and satisfied customer to make the business grow. And um, this is uh, the philosophy also of, of the approach for hermeticity as well. And it's not only a concern for uh, what you do in the production, Area, but what also is the impact all along the supply chain. So I think you heard this many times during the conference yesterday as well. And this is absolutely true in this example. Um, the, the complexity uh, of the hermeticity is related also to the transportation mode and the destination and uh, the expectation of the retailer or other customer, etc., etc. So make the scope very large and probably go also over uh, even the consumer or the person who will eat because you have also a social responsibility against the environment with new material entering in the process and uh, if they are compostable or how, how many times you can recycle and how it affects the quality of electricity when you use this kind of material, etc. And in general, you will have a little data, because if I look at the population using metrologic system, I'm guessing that either you have a sense of touch with your hand to know if the push is leaking or not, or you evaluate with bubble emission in water bath. And uh, today, in the presentation, uh, so we have to consider many constraints around the, the packaging industry, and we will focus on the topics in red in this uh, presentation, mainly. Uh, I will start probably with the food safety a little bit, not too deep because you have a little population uh, having modified atmospheres, but I guess that you will also move in other industry in your life, and it's probably good that you have some perspective, especially when we heard about uh, scandal in food uh, issues and so on, including in confectionery. So, first, definitions and terms. We have to be clear about um, two notions, uh, which are sometimes confusing. What is a leak? Uh, a leak could be determined as a, a size of defect in the structure of the, of the film, 
uh, but it could be more widely and uh, on physical basis. A quantity of matter, so in our example, air or gas through the wall of the, uh, of the package. Uh, a transfer of matter in between uh, internal atmosphere of the package and external <coughs> uh, This is different from permeation of the film, basically. Uh, permeation is a, kind of, it's a diffusion of molecules, uh, and um, this is a slightly different of a direct uh, uh, input coming from the external stress uh, you may have on the packaging. We will develop that uh, just after. Another definition is the half time. Uh, the, this is the, the time uh, in which the 50% uh, of the internal atmosphere will be replaced depending, of course, of the size of the defect, the headspace, uh, the activity of the product, etc. But what happens in real life is exactly this in a transportation. So you are ideally packing uh, this street, uh, let's say in the slug, uh, in this picture, and uh, you have a transit on the road through mountains, and you have a piling uh, package uh, also, uh, wiring, etc. Uh, generating external depression by change of temperature, altitude, or just uh, depression in the, in the aircraft. And uh, when it arrives to the retailer, uh, it, it is stored for a while until the consumer buys it. And then the, the result is uh, red or green. I mean, is my package still well inflated with a nice air feel, or uh, is my biscuit completely crumbled and uh, do I have some leakage provoking this? And in this uh, stress, uh, independently of the quality of the seal, you have this uh, external stress active, actively uh, provoking exchange rate for gases when you have modified atmosphere or for uh, water vapor. So then the question is what is the, the level of leak you should uh, have uh, to uh, avoid a certain uh, uptake or exchange over time. And of course, it's related to your shelf life. The more, uh, the larger is the shelf life, uh, the more strict you have to be, or the larger the headspace has to be to be productive for, um, for the goods, for the food. But in general, on the retailer side, uh, you have mainly a diffusion through the defect. So you have diffusion through the, the material, plastic or the barrier field, but also through the puncture or defects uh, which gives a free way between uh, inside and uh, external uh, parts uh, or storage uh, condition. Basically, when we measure leak rate, uh, talking about a mass transfer, uh, we have a, a dimension given in Pascal cubic meter per second, so it's relatively technical. But compared to diffusion, uh, which is uh, more or less related to uh, surface uh, per second of the quantity of gas uh, through uh, the speed of gas diffusing through the defect or through the material. But the leak rate is expressed in Pascal cubic meter per second, meaning that the pressure condition is important, but also the volume and the time. So if we cross now the information about permeation and leak measurements, it gives uh, this kind of matrix where you may reduce uh, the permeation rate and the leak level uh, to have a, a limited uh, breathable uh, packaging. But on the other extreme, so I talk about the red colors in general, so if we talk about uh, the extreme, you have also the left inside corner, uh, bottom corner, and why? If I'm too strict, or if I invest too much in barrier film, for instance, then uh, either I stop my machinery all the time to set it up, or I buy expensive components to have uh, something really tight. And the question is, is it really cost-effective and efficient, uh, finally, or should we go in this direction? So basically, the truth is always in the middle, and to know exactly what is the level we absolutely need. Uh, also, sometimes to have some exhaust or aromas we don't want to have when the consumer is opening the, the package. 
So this limit has to be really defined by the capability of your tool and what you expect in shape life and nature of products, uh, of course, and activity of the product. Basically, nobody will tell you what is the limit in hermeticity you should achieve. You have to determine by yourself, but here I'm there to help you to find a way. So one way is first to have a certain idea of what is the effect of a venture. So just to remind, an easy reminder in the dimension, you consider a 10 by 10 by one centimeter package with 100 milliliter headspace to make it short. And imagine that you have a, a thickness of film of 100 micron. I know it's not really common, it's probably thinner in your application, so it means it's worse. <laughs> uh, but it's just for a re reminding it, uh, easy. If you have modified atmosphere and you look for aseptic conditions, meaning over 20% of CO2, with just a defect of 100 micron diameter, which is very small, it's uh, as large as the diameter of air, then you lose aseptic uh, condition in about 15 hours. When we talk about water vapor, uh, considering that the storage is uh, in 50% relative humidity, you reach already 40% inside the package in one day. And for oxygen uptake, so imagine snacking, for instance, uh, potato snacks or things like that, Doritos, uh, you ha can have also an uptake from 1 to 10% oxygen in 12 hours. This is for gas and for water vapor a little bit. But when you reduce, uh, the, the diameter or equivalent lead size to 30 micrometer with the same condition for the size of the packaging and headspace, then you can see the multiplication. Your half life uh, turns to 6 days instead of 0 0.7 days. Okay, And if you have a low headspace, then the speed to replace all the internal atmosphere, uh, if you have only 10 milliliter headspace instead of 100 milliliter, with 30 micron, then you go to down to one day change. So it can be very quick. And it's quick through the defect. So generally, when you estimate your uh, <coughs> shelf life based on permeation of film, you have also to consider the quality of your production line to achieve a certain level of hermeticity. Otherwise, the effect you look for is completely destroyed. Example in the next. If you have a PE film with a high permeation rate, the effect of the puncture is relatively limited, but it goes 10 times faster anyway. But if you look for a high barrier film, then the speed of migration or exchange rates uh, of gases or relative humidity is uh, 10,000 to 100,000 times faster. And you can see the proportion uh, and value between the defects, uh, air to air, and communication of gas through this defect against power barrier film, the factor is uh, 10 power 12. So we are absolutely in different dimensions compared to what you probably use uh, just with the data sheets of uh, material. So the first uh, conclusion uh, for, for this is uh, the, the smallest is the leak size, uh, the higher is the half-life. And uh, of course, the package is very sensitive if we have a little headspace. So I mean, the product is exposed to the change uh, more quickly. Now, a little bit about food safety and pathogens. So yesterday, probably, you hear some of my questions. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I was so here, but I want also to, to, hear, to hear about uh, all the processes and what could be the effect of gases on pathogen and uh, also in this food industry, how we should consider it. Uh, will it be useful or not? So it's just a question to you. It's not an answer for me. Uh, it depends on your products and uh, your strategy. But basically, what could happen in the life of a package? So. Uh, we fight against uh, small animals like polyopter, so the, 
This one was discovered in 2014 in Costa Rica. This is the smallest polar chair, so the size is 100 to 200 microns. This, this is an information we should have in mind because in Asia, for instance, uh, in storage condition for consumer, they fight against ants and other animals which are quite small. So this gives a picture of the size. In future, maybe, maybe we can have some robots to infest also packaging. So this is uh, here, the smallest robot with legs, uh, world report, 100 microns. So if you have a robot for censoring uh, information inside the package, this is probably the next infestation in the future. Who knows? Um, then hair size, 40 to 100 microns. We fight all the time with uh, uh, covering uh, head and so on. The blood cell, 7.5 micron. So imagine meat industry, for instance. So do you want to have a really blood cell out of the package? And then the pathogen. So the pathogens, they have no legs. So they will not uh, really cross over by their own. So but uh, of course, we try to limit our breath with a mask, so I imagine that it's for good reason, and we also put packaging around the product, I imagine that's for good reason also. The question is where are the pathogens coming from, and can they grow or not? So I hear many things about it uh, in your industry, uh, in this pet industry, because generally, let's say the pathogen has no uh, condition for growth because of uh, moisture or free water, which is not in enough quantity to develop the pathogen still. Just to give you an example of an experimentation. So we take a petri box, similar to a package, and we inject a certain quantity of oxygen during six hours. And after six hours, we stop the injection of pure oxygen, and we see what is the development of E. coli in this petri box. And if you look here, in 15 hours, more or less, we are below 1%. So imagine a process where you have injected nitrogen to reduce oxygen. So you expect to have a 1% oxygen rate at the beginning, or at T0 time of the last thing, last thing. And 15 hours later, meaning after night, you check again with just gas analysis, and you see 1% oxygen. So everybody is happy, my process is fine, I wanted 1%, I had it, and one night later I still have 1%. Cool. But what happens in a certain condition? In this example, in the study, you have in 30 hours a multiplication of the cells of pathogen by 10. It's not neglectable. Only 30 hours later. In other conditions, by reducing the flow of injection here, you can have it in 50 hours, this development. So if I do a retro calculation of what should be the leak rate through the defect of my package to have this mass of oxygen entering in the package and helping equally to develop, then I arrive to a certain level of leak rate, about, in the first example, 12, 3 milliliter per minute, and second example, one milliliter per minute. To give you a picture, it means that my defect has to be less than 30 micrometer. More. 30 micrometer. Blood cells, 7.5 micrometer. So 30 micro micrometer, it's uh, smaller than hair size. Okay? So, only measuring gas is not enough to know if uh, it is uh, satisfying the condition because to stay on this example, imagine that you take your package, you measure 1% of oxygen, and uh, you consider that everything is okay. So maybe you deliver something which is contaminated to the consumer. On the other hand, if you do a bacterial test, suddenly you shock because you have multiplied the number of pathogens. So then what is the next step? You stop the factory and you clean everything. And maybe it was just a hermeticity problem, maybe just a problem with Joe's helping in the development. And then the conclusion is completely wrong and the effect could be catastrophic.
Well, generally, you don't have equally in your application, let's say. But what you may face is the staphylococci and salmonella. And then the, the concern is the really higher in terms of lethality. I mean, the danger is higher. So the question is how it could be developed. So generally, you can have a, a spoiled edge coming from uh, the ingredients and components you may have, so cocoa, uh, cocoa and uh, almond, and uh, nuts, uh, things like that, helping the pathogen to develop. The question, because in other industries like poultry, for instance, uh, they do uh, an inhibition of, of, of the salmonella by injection of high rate of oxygen. I don't know if it could apply in your application. And also keeping uh, aseptic condition with CO2. It's, today it's a question to you. Uh, I have no answer. This is not really in my uh, expertise. But it's just to raise up questions. So, when we talk about leak, and if uh, the package is tight too much, we can also have non-desired uh, situations. So this is why I say it cannot be go, no go, and just a detection limit, and uh, you stay uh, okay uh, under a certain level, and you block everything after you uh, achieve a negative uh, answer. Generally, this is the way we think for quality control. I mean, you need to know if you can free the product or if you have to stop the line or stop the deliveries. But the question of hermeticity is you have so many causes of problem, you cannot really react like that. You need a certain uh, history uh, and certain background or at least to have an evaluation of your capability of machines. And then the question is, uh, what is the effect on pathogen, etc., etc. So but again, I'm not biochemical involved. Oh. Oh, sorry. Yes. So generally, because you have no instrumentation, so I'm guessing that you use water bath with bubble emission, uh, and then uh, diving or driving, because. Uh, Having the product with water in a dry industry, it's not uh, really nice to have water somewhere. Sometimes you fail in organizing the test. Sometimes you have burst of the package inside the water bath. Then uh, the water is not really clean enough. The turbidity is increasing. Uh, I imagine that with the water and floor, you don't do again some cakes with it, I, I hope. And uh, also it's tricky to drive because uh, depending on the depth of your package inside the water bath, the size of the bubbles is very difficult. So except if you are a very expert and if someone here can tell me how many bubbles we have, you cannot give uh, any calculation of what is the leak rate. So this is why for me I give you a life jacket. I try to make you survive this experience. And hopefully, uh, you don't have to wait so long time. So the question is, what is the methodology I will use for having an answer about 30 macron in less than 15 minutes, at least? If I look for 3 micron, you will refuse my solution for this one. <laughs> This is described also in another way with uh, some standard for the water bath. So uh, here is the ASTM F2096. The probability of seeing a bubble which fits to a leak rate or a leakage, sorry, uh, or defect of the package. So for soft packaging and generally use soft packaging, you have 80% of chance to see bubbles which are not considered as a leaking package. 80% of chance to see bubbles which are not leaked. And you have 30% of probability to see bubbles corresponding to defects of 75 micrometer air size. Air size. And only 80% of probability to see a leak corresponding to 275 micrometer. So it's big, it's like an acupuncture uh, needle. And one of the one of the example also is uh, 
I can see many bubbles, but uh, they are tipped on the wall of this application, so uh, I should consider it. You have some new standard as well to try to do it better with WaterVas. So you have the DIN triple five zero right five zero eight five. So, um, but then it's uh, start to be a long test, um, counting in minutes to do an observation, which finally <coughs> don't give any value. <coughs> so you cannot have a commitment with your supplier if you don't have valuable data. And with the water bus, you have no data. Yes, you have the location of the main leak area, but not the total surface uh, of defects of the package. So you have only the worst one. But the worst one, you don't know the contribution with the rest of the defect of the package. So finally, you can commit nothing internally or externally, except that you can act on a specific point of your process. So finally, many variables of influence. <coughs> So then the question is how to set it up then? So again, I try to give you the life jacket. Life jacket is uh, number one, this is a very strong rule, is to set a methodological reference. If you don't have it, you cannot really do any improvement or just compare uh, or assign uh, a, a limits of uh, other technique to know exactly what it gives you know, as a result and, uh, and what you should en enter in action afterwards. <coughs> Everybody is concerned, in, uh, in, and it's, it's close to what uh, Dennis is saying, or was saying yesterday. Everybody is concerned in the improvement of the packaging process. Quality, procurement, marketing, financial. Because if you have the right tool, uh, and you can do evaluation and you can see what is the effect of one solution you set, then you can really quantify and, and, uh, and make the right choice in terms of tools, material, and so on. So finally, everybody is concerned. It's not only a question of quality control, it's also at R&D step, quality step, also setup of the machinery. And to organize it, you have to limit the number of variables. So take it easy, so come back to the definition of uh, what is a leak rate. A leak rate is expressed in Pascal cubic meter per second, so I need to know how much pressure I put on the package to see a certain quantity of air out of it. And to, to get it, in general, so you need to have a certain constant volume of the package and know the pressure inside and to count the bubble. Somebody want to do it? No, not the bubble in water because uh, the, this is not the real condition of the package. In the life of the package, it never cross uh, and go in swimming pool and then it's eager to consume it. Never happens. Oh, I never heard that and uh, for sure not for this bit. So, Basically, the condition is always air to air, having a metrologic reference based on air because what you are measuring is gas out or gas in. This is exactly what I propose. The physics of it is given by this. So Pascal cubic, Pascal cubic meter per second is uh, the leak rate. And this, uh, this is given by this equation. So basically you will inflate the package, um, keep a volume as constant as you can, or at least the pressure uh, constant as you can, and you will measure the quantity of air out of it. Basically it should fit to the quantity of air you inject as well, when the volume is fully expanded. Translated in curves, and also in practice, you can see on the video in the meantime. So you inflate it, you increase the pressure in, you keep the pressure stable in, and you measure the flow out. And this is your leak level. This is the way you do it, or we do it. 
And uh, you can see that we can even punch us through the biscuit. We are not afraid by the matter to have the answer. We have some technology to do it. So with uh, specialized needles to puncture and to have the right information. Another aspect, it's not only the leak, it's also the air field. If you are too tight and if you have a too large uh, air field in, your package is fully expanded, but does it mean that it will survive uh, air transport? Not sure. And then you will have this kind of risk as well, the burst. So coming back to the previous one, so this is interesting also to know what is the quantity of air I have injected to know what was my initial condition of air field. So generally to have the complete information for leak tests, or leak rate, sorry, you need to know the pressure, the volume, depending on the technology you choose for metrologic information. You need these two dimensions in a way or another, or to keep one stable to uh, just measure the other one. In our cases, we decided to keep the pressure constant and measure the flow. And then uh, we measure the cubic meter per second and we know the pressure condition, so we know the Pascal. So then, uh, how you can choose between the different techniques? So this is also given by a, by a standard, European standard. It's not from me. Um, bubble tester, this is the worst. So you have the sensitivity given in millibar of meter per second, which is similar to Pascal to meter per second. And uh, with the technique of uh, constant flow at uh, sorry, constant pressure and flow measuring. We are placed here and here we are, just in the middle. The best is the mass spectrometer, but you know the budget for it. So, and it's difficult to operate as well. So in both extreme situations, it's difficult to operate. So one is very cheap, no? three euros, I think it's enough no? for what of us. <laughs> uh, and here we talk about 100,000, even more, I think. So we are somewhere in a nicer place, price-wise, but also practical. Then the question is how reproducible is the process and how to commit to the best solution and how we do the evaluation. So I give you a case. This is an interesting case, and I will spend a little time on it. I let you time for reading, but I will also explain. These two products, uh, I, bu I bought them on the shelf in Thailand. Thailand, 80% humidity, 40 degrees. Conditions are really difficult. Expectation of the customer also is very hard because they don't want ants, they don't want coleoptera in the package. So the feeling uh, of the buyer at the end is to have trust in the packaging. So on the left hand side, the, um, this one. This is locally produced in Thailand, delivered in Thailand, and it's really nice package. Well inflated, thick material, look robust. We feel safe. We feel safe, but we can keep only 12 months. What we have inside? We have scavenger, modified atmosphere. Ooh, it's already a huge cost and investment from the beginning. We have an additional package to keep the breadfruit separated from the rest because of the water activity, but only for 12 months. If you compare here, I have nothing similar here. And we have 18 months shelf life. And in addition, this product is produced in Philippines to be delivered in Thailand. So I imagine that there is a transportation somehow by sea or by air. And how they can do it? And also the film is Thinner. So it looks safer. Okay, for this package, they have one of our solutions. For this one, no. Then the question is you want to expand shelf life or you want to really secure your consumer and to have a massive investment and forward. If you just deliver your neighbor, you don't need to have so much uh, condition. And basically, if we imagine that this one go to air freight, 
it will burst. Potentially, because it's so inflated, you have already a big tense on the sea. So finally, not knowing, not measuring, uh, could bring also the factory to have massive solution for what efficiency. You see, Dennis, it's very close to what you say. <laughs> so, how to help to achieve these goals and to make uh, things measurable? Uh, like this. When you have a metrology system, you have data. And the data, you have to look like exactly like this. You are used to have the population and distribution. I see in many presentations the last days. You are used to have it. But in general, for a lead tester, you don't have it. I don't know why, or even sometimes for gas analyzers. Look your data and result exactly like this. What is the distribution? If you start to have the 50-50 division here, the red line here, going to the left, you are winning. It means that you are improving the quality. If you have double normal distribution, it means that you have a systematic cause to find out and you need to have this group of samples or uh, package to the left hand side to make progress. This is how you will demonstrate and for packaging machine uh, or whatever the solution is, for jaws, for material, even for positioning the product inside the package, this is the way to look at it. And not with uh, just a limit and just a threshold and uh, I stop the line when I achieve the limit, no because the causes of losing hermeticity are multiple. So you need to have a, a certain picture and experience it. Position of the biscuit. This is an example. This is the same product, same packaging line, same foil, same material. The only change is uh, in one application I have three biscuits and in another one I have five biscuits. And you can see that uh, the quality is pouring curiously with the three biscuit. <laughs> so where we could expect that with five biscuit, the chance on the fall could be bigger. Uh, no, this is uh, experiments show the a different scenario, a different scenario, and this is how you make the improvements. Finally, we succeeded in tuning the machinery in less than one day to have everything set up correctly to the left and working. Another example, for modified atmosphere, I know it's there are limited numbers to have it in the application, but we talk about three different packaging lines with gas injection. And you can see that the blue one, in terms of distribution, turned to the left with minimal oxygen level, seems to be okay compared to the gray and orange one. This is for modified atmosphere, but what about hermeticity? Because if you put gas to modify the internal atmosphere of your package, you expect that it will last a certain time in it. All right, why you do it? Now, if we add a data like hermeticity check, ah, I have some troubles. Huh? <laughs> yes. At T0, the gas is perfect, but the quality of seal shows already that you have some dangers, especially with the packaging line, the blue color, where you have a big a large spread. Even others have problems, but it's I'm more concerned with the blue one. And if you correlate the two figures, oxygen rate against leak rate, then you get it. And this is just at T0 time of selling. So if you do shelf life study or if you take the data one day later and or three days later and you see the object, you have a better contrast and you can know exactly what is the limit you can, you can achieve. Because what you look for is to have a limitation in the object. For moisture, it's the same. So quantify leak rates, analyze data, Statistical distribution, quantitative leak testing, this is really a must have. 
The benefit of it is you can be very selective in your solution, in the thickness of material, in the speed of the lines, in the quality of the jaws, the temperature of seam, every variables you have, you can measure it and see the effect almost immediately. You don't need 10,000 samples. So uh, we could tune a machinery with uh, just uh, 50 samples uh, easily, even less. So this is the solution we have, and you can also test on our booth today. So the principle is uh, for modified atmosphere, we start to pull out the gas and measure oxygen and CO2, then we push back with air, keep the pressure constant in, measure the flow out, and incidentally, we can also do a burst to see where the defect will occur, delamination or break for the seal or break of the film or whatsoever. So this is uh, the interface. The curve to see also the behavior of the package because sometimes you have stretching effects or some relaxation effects. It depends what you use. So you can also have this in your curves and statistic collection, and sometimes some expertise on Excel to cross the data and compare two solutions. Good methodology, right solution, data analysis, and consumer etc. Yeah, everyone can see. <laughs> I have a, for people who are interested in it. So I have a summary also of the publication for pathogen and gas related. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would be useful. You are welcome to this. And I thank you for your attention. So if you have questions, don't hesitate. application because just you expect long life uh, long shape life so you need to really check how the product is aging and in addition if you have a strict or uh, difficult condition of transportation and strict specification so uh, it reminds me uh, a customer who wants to deliver a brazil to japan for instance uh, I mean, you need to pay double attention but coming back to your, your question uh, we have no limitation in the type of packaging, so we can do uh, this technique on the vacuum pack packaging, but also metal boxes. And any kind of product uh, until it's solid. If you have uh, um, uh, oil products or acrylic products, uh, I mean, I, I don't talk about biscuit in this, uh, in this example, so, but if you have a jam, for instance, uh, it's difficult when you have a liquid product inside the package because you need to have a free area around the sea. Okay, we can talk about that. Um, we are such a machine, but an older one. Uh, I would also like to ask you the diffusion um, rate that you showed us on one of your earlier slides. At what altitude was that test done? Uh, I think it was uh, on that condition, so, uh, so but uh, yeah, I think in the calculation it's just C, uh, C level, so we talk about, I have so many. <laughs> <laughs> this one? Yes, yes. Uh, at C level. So of course if you increase the CAP, so especially with attitude, yes, it may change and temperature as well. Okay, I will ask a question, Eric. Um, we never had any success with using these, this kind of equipment in roll wrap, because roll wrap, the aperture at the end of the pants is so big, you could drive a bus through it, or the metal over it, and put it there. So uh, for me, the question is, I understand the application completely for flow wrap, 
and for anything associated with that. Your recommendation as to how to use this equipment. So you use it, you talked about using it to set up wrapping machines to be ideal. So you can use it to establish best practice for putting a wrapping machine together and the jaws and the settings and the heat and the flow, etc. etc. The kind of packaging you want, depending on how far you want it to go. Uh, but um, what about the normal process control? So half hourly, one hourly checks. Where's the best benefit? The, the best benefit is first to have a systematic and regular um, control. The numbers, you, you can have a, a picture of the numbers if you look at uh, the data, for instance. Let's take an example of the spread. Generally, uh, our customers, they take five samples. You know? So if you look at a, let's say a distribution, you take five samples randomly. Uh, following, on the flow pack, you take uh, five uh, test uh, next to them. Uh, and um, you can see the spread. So imagine that I have only a collection of five samples, but I start to heat all along the range of the instrument. It means I have a problem already. I don't need to do a 100 test. I have already the answer because it has to be more focused. It means something is already deviating. If you are purist in statistics, yes, of course, you increase the number because you want a certain consistency of the test. So I would say, of course, if you push the numbers of samples, like 20 samples, you will have a better picture. But it takes time to set up the machinery when you wait for the first run. Um, but it's a big helper also for the machinist or for the driver of the machinery to know exactly what is the best temperature and if it is uh, moving in the right direction. And also with minimum number of samples, you don't need 10,000 before starting the machine to know. Okay, so far. Uh, we are having a problem in one of the uh, products that, uh, I don't know if it's a, a micro hole, but it leaks the oil, the spray oil that we apply after the oven. Um, could that be detectable with this kind of measurement and solve it like? Yeah. Because it, it seems simple, but it, is, it looks like it's more complex than we first start. No, it's, uh, it's quite simple. I remember a uh, uh, potato crisp, not of your brain, and I will not name it anyway. <laughs> uh, but a uh, potato crisp on the shelf, uh, treated a side with uh, uh, oil, uh, what's it, oil tanks. Um, so, of course, uh, it, it is refused by the buyer uh, when you have uh, such a vision, and uh, basically when you test for the leak you have the immediate uh, answer of what's happening. So um, if, we, if we talk about a <coughs> capillary effect, because uh, there is also a standard for that uh, using colorimetric uh, system uh, with uh, methylene blue and alcohol, it gives uh, a certain sensitivity, about 10, 20 micron sensitivity, depending if it is uh, a cheminée or channel through the seal, or if it is a direct puncture on the foil. So in the second example, it's 10 micron sensitivity with uh, methylene blue. So it's 1% methylene blue in ethanol, in the ethanol. Um, you have the result in 15 minutes with this uh, kind of solution. And uh, with our system, you for a 300 gram protective crisp, if you go in this direction, you have the result in 30 seconds with a sensitivity of 5 micrometers. So, comes back to this. I'm prepared to wait. So, uh, if you can have many, uh, many manufacturers of solutions claiming for one micron sensitivity, or, but they never give you the condition of the test, meaning at which pressure of stress and how long time you have to wait. For us, we can test with internal pressure as low as 10 millibar over pressure, which is really little, uh, to make sure that you have uh, the footprint of the process 
to know exactly what the process is doing and not having an instrument either not sensitive enough and you think everything is okay or uh, stressing that much that it's generating the defect. Okay, so okay, so thank you. Thank you.